Our next presenter is a five-time World Palm Literary Award-winning writer. He's published nine books of his own, 70 books total through his publishing company of other authors. <laughs> He's helped over 100 people write their manuscripts, which has resulted in a few hundred books being born into this world. He's billed as the book whisperer, Michael Ray King. Wow, that feels like an out-of-body experience. <laughs> Yes, I wrote that myself. <laughs> How does it feel? Michael wrote it for you. Yes, he did. Okay. I was just going to read. Pardon me while I go get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of it? Great name. I was just going to read this one piece that I wrote today. But I decided since we're in a poetry thing, why not go with the flow, right? So from I'm going to have a blast from 1983, followed by one from 2017. First up, it's going to be a tale of two poems. One of them is a second place award-winning poem. The other is a first place. And there's a story behind each of them. The first one will be self-explanatory. It's titled No One's There. The Artwork was done by Tracy McDermott. She took my poetry and interpreted it through acrylic paintings. So no one's there. Alone is not so lonely as not having a life to share. It is not so bad as one may think until it's thought that no one's there. Except you, a room, and empty dreams in which only you believe. And the person sitting behind the pen is the only one deceived. How frail emotion makes a man is such a humbling slap. When life comes crumbling inward, falling ever in your lap, sorting out the shards of love in search of inner peace, acquiring only cuts and gouges, the likes of which may never cease. You suffer from within yourself, wanting to show you really care, and it's not so bad as one may think, until it's thought that no one's there. That was a bit depressive in my early 20s. This, this poem is actually from 1982. I had a breakup with a girlfriend, and it was a four, it was a four year one. Gosh, history repeats itself. And I wrote two scathing poems that night after I threw her I, th I threw her shit over the balcony. I was on the second floor <laughs> apartment. <laughs> I threw it all out. Lamps, everything. Wow. Wee! Oh, that felt good. <laughs> oh. Hey, oh, part of the bed. <laughs> but I was so bitterly upset and angry. I felt like I better do something to change my life right then and there in words. This poem won first place in 2009 in a poetry contest with the Board of Writers Association, the World Palm Literary Awards. It is the biggest freaking lie on planet Earth. And that's because I wrote, after the first two scathing poems, I wrote the exact opposite of how I feel, felt. It seemed like after I wrote this poem, when I showed it to people, all the women were like, oh God, that's so beautiful. This is the biggest piece of gag I've ever written in my life. <laughs> That's my preface. It's called Melody of a New Dawning. Please. <laughs> Good morning, life. How are you? It's been such a very long time. I've missed out on your best so far. I've come to claim what's mine. Hello, dreams. Where have you been? I've waited much too long. Your colors and hue have always been true. I want to fully belong. Spring has delivered a reverie, a song of flowers and trees. Life has brought back the melody, the music of the birds and the bees. It's a melody of a beautiful new dawning, a song to live and breathe. Charting high above the branches, dreams return my life to me. Good morning, life. I'm doing fine. It's been such a long, long time. I'll not miss out on your best again. Because now I know what is mine. Oh, God. 
you don't know how angry I was that day. You're such a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I had to do something because I was really pissed. Okay. Now this is this is more along along the lines of where I'm at now as a writer and as a book coach, book whisperer, whatever you want to call me. It, I wrote this this morning. It's on my blog. I titled it "Inking Your Soul." So here we go. Your book. Your blog post, your story, your life. There exist uncountable reasons and ideas to write. There exist innumerable de debilitating explanations as to why you don't write. I've seen them all. In the end, either motivation and inspiration went out, Either we give, our, give ourselves permission to accomplish our desire, or we distract ourselves with what we call life. 